Hi, I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of today's newsletter is going to be resurrecting yourself from your beta image. So I've got an updated email success story, and this is from the guy who he's, I guess about a month, month and a half ago, sent me an email that I did in a video newsletter called Finally Escape the Friend Zone, but was it, but was it worth the wait? So he sends an update because he's got another success story to add into the mix. And what's cool is he goes into a little bit more detail on the background on the success that went into the, the first video newsletter that I did. And it's a great email because you could see like in his peer group how he kind of, everybody in his peer group, especially the women, formed an image of him as this beta male. And so he shares some of the cocky things that he said to two different women in particular and how effective it was even one of them who basically got kind of an attitude and is like no way I'm not going to do what you want kind of vibe that she gave off but she eventually came around on her own without any kind of prodding just because he gave off the right vibe so it's a great success story because i know lots of guys come to my work and they're wanting to kind of right the wrongs of the past or to kind of turn some of those failures that they may have had especially when they involve women that are in their peer group or their social circle and turn them into victories because the the greatest way to silence your critics and the greatest medicine for failure is winning, is having successes. So I got a quote that I wrote and then we'll go through his email. And the quote says, never let defeat have the last word. No matter how many failures, setbacks, and disappointments you've had, as long as you keep trying and learning from your mistakes, eventually things will turn around and successes will happen. Average people give up easily. High achievers never stop trying to improve, learn, refine their approach, and get better. All great success stories and great people only happened because they chose to persist without exception when quitting seemed like the sane and rational thing to do. All great people who accomplish great things have a little touch of madness that makes insanely great endeavors possible. So with that said, let's go through his email. He says, hey, Coach Corey, I wanted to give you two success stories on how I basically resurrected myself from the beta image that I showed off to countless women while being stuck on one chick, but two in particular that had high interest in me in the past that I managed to successfully turn the table with. So obviously these women really liked him, and because he didn't know any better, he talked them out of liking him. But he turned that around. So to paint the picture for the audience and viewers, you recently did my email story titled Escape Finally escaped from the friend zone, but was it worth the wait? A little more context for timeline purposes. That whole ordeal took place between 2015 and 2019. So we're talking four years. That's a long time. In 2019, I was 23 going on 24. Now being at the age of 25 is when most of these events occurred. So in the previous newsletter email i explained how i was glued to the one honduran chick we were in this fitness organization at the time and there were so many beautiful or where so many beautiful women resided many of whom would compliment my physique at these workouts obviously that means they find you attractive and even had a few try to shoot their shot with me but i was so zoned in at the time with this one girl i turned down several experiences that i regretted until recently and so I talk about this a lot when a guy or a girl for that matter gets fixated on one particular person that's not going anywhere and especially if they're telling themselves that they don't deserve to have what they really want. And like this guy's case, he's in good shape and women are coming up to him shooting their shot so to speak and it's just kind of going right over his head, going right by him because he's so fixated on somebody that it's not going anywhere with. And the interesting thing is, is that when you when you got somebody that it's not progressing with and then you have other opportunities, you just simply go where the other opportunities are. And oftentimes that other woman sees that 
when she wasn't interested supposedly sees that you just move on and other girls are showing your showing you attention and affection she tends to come back and make a little bit more of an effort and you'll see that as we get further in the email that that is part of what helped him succeed with this other woman is because he was indifferent to whatever it didn't matter that she wasn't interested or wasn't paying him any attention other women were and so he focused his attention on the women that were and then he gets a tap on the shoulder and guess who it is it's beautiful how that works that's why being attached to anything is so detrimental to you moving forward and taking care of the opportunities that are there that's a true abundance mindset and if you love and you value yourself then you want somebody that's excited to see you excited to spend time with you that jumps at the opportunity to be with you women that can't find the time aren't that interested they can go pound sand and you'll just go find somebody else and you just have to move on and treat them that way that's deep down what they really want anyways even if they don't come after you at least they respect you as a man because you didn't stay engaged when they weren't making any effort you just simply move on to greener pastures it's like you go to where the crowd is more favorable to what you're offering <clears throat> So back to his, so he says these women would compliment my physique at these workouts and even had a few shoot their shot with me, but I was so zoned in at the time with this one girl, I turned down several experiences that I regretted until recently. So the first female is a gorgeous, fun-sized, petite mom of two who currently takes care of her body and is a hard worker, but in a relationship with a guy who's out of shape and you can't tell ideologies doesn't align with hers off of just looking at them together back then this was a woman who was always overly friendly to me complimenting my body and how i smelled and even gave me those extra long hugs all subtle key indicators of a girl with interests but she had a boyfriend she shot her shot once on instagram after seeing me post on my stories a fun arcade bar I had went to, and she replied, Ooh, that looks like fun. I want to go. At the time, I wasn't knowledgeable of your work, but knowing now, I would have took that as the girl who's interested in me reaching out and turn it into a date, but it didn't happen, and instead responded with, You should go. Fast forward to the end of 2020, I've been focusing on my business and just working on myself and recently posted on my Instagram story an event that was held at her former school, and she responded stating, why was that I at her old school, LOL. I viewed her comment and left her on read. <laughs> Keep in mind, this woman has over 10,000 followers on Instagram and has guys throwing themselves at her in the comments and DMs. Yeah, so she's got lots of guys throwing their dicks at her. So she has lots of choices and lots of options. And she's shooting her shot with him. And he's kind of indifferent to it. So that probably doesn't happen at all, a guy leaving her on read. So a couple of weeks later, I see her at a fitness clinic and she made eye contact with me, but quickly turned away and it was obvious because we were the only two people there besides the workers. It was interesting seeing her reaction after as she quickly took her products outside to her car without speaking and came back for one more bag and was about to leave and I called her name, which she then said, oh, hey, like we didn't already make eye contact and came over and greeted me. So she was acting like she didn't see him. She brought up that she had DM'd me and I left her on read. And instead of apologizing about it like the old me would have responded, he says, which she looked at me crazy for saying, and then proceeded to answer her original question why I was at her school. Then she asked me about the old chick stating I was always glued to her and following her around, obviously like a little puppy dog. He says, I told her that that TV show ended and I won a Grammy for it, which she seemed to love that response. So he's got a playful response. So in other words, she's kind of calling him out about the fact that he was following some little girl around, some other girl around like a puppy dog. 
And instead of getting butthurt about it, he uses it as an opportunity for some self-deprecating humor. Like, hey, I was, I was acting and I, I won an Emmy for that. Or a Grammy, sorry. 15 minutes passed, and during those 15 minutes, she was ultra close to me, touching my arm and complimenting, complimenting my shoes and everything, everything. So obviously, when a woman's complimenting you, when, whether it's your shirt or your shoes or your appearance, it's obvious she's expressing that she's interested. So I proceeded to ask what she had planned for the rest of the day, and she responded nothing, which I knew was a lie based off the products she bought. She had to deliver those to her clients, so I asked her, if she wanted to come to my place to try some new shakes, which was five minutes from the location. She agreed with no hesitation, and the rest was history. Hang out, have fun, hook up. A man's job, as I discuss in 3% Man, is just simply to create an opportunity for sex to happen. So this woman comes over. The past doesn't equal the future. She's expressing interest. He's like, hey, would you like to come over and try some shakes out? And maybe we'll shake something else out. The second success story took a little more work. This girl was much younger than I was at the time. She was part of my social circle, being the youngest, and was my best friend's girlfriend's sister. A beautiful Latin petite brunette with a voice so seductive and a laugh that would turn any guy on. She was showing me interest no girl had ever showed me before, and she was in a relationship at the time. She would do numerous subtle things that your book eventually pointed out to me, like ask tons of questions, always in my orbit, wanting to sit next to me at our social events, even fixed my plate with her boyfriend being there. Might not be the most faithful and loyal type of woman if she's hitting on and flirting with another dude in front of her boyfriend. Even if she doesn't have a lot of respect for him, that's not good behavior. During the time I involved my social circle in the mess with me chasing the Honduran chick, which they became aware of all the weak behaviors I was showing for this girl, it became evident to her and would present a multitude of tests from her when I eventually asked her to hang out. She agreed to a burger joint, but would end up flaking on me twice one of the times 10 minutes before I was supposed to pick her up with an excuse as to one of the worst flakes I've ever heard, which she texted, not called, it's too cold outside, even though we planned on being inside for the date. So 10 minutes before you're supposed to go on a date, she's like, oh, it's too cold. I'm just going to stay inside. From then, I never reached out again, and eventually she asked to hang out for the third time. So a woman flakes on you 10 minutes before, even if she reaches out a few weeks later and continues to reach out, you don't ever bring up getting together again. She has to bring it up first. Otherwise, one of two things will happen. She'll either quit calling and go away, which that solves the problem, or she brings up getting together, and since she brings up getting together, it's her idea, then you don't have to worry about the flake because it's something she wanted to do. It was her idea. If a woman's chasing you, she's not dumping you or getting rid of you. This being the final straw, as she tried to change the time of the date from our agreed upon time to an hour later, instead of holding frame, I became butthurt and I made up a an excuse not to go. And the craziest part of this story is after that happened, we had another social gathering at her sister's house and she would eventually tell all of us she had a date with a guy she didn't even want to go out with. And literally, she had to be convinced by all the girls in a circle not to cancel on the guy because he was already on his way. The whole time I'm looking at her like, what the hell is wrong with her? She eventually gave in and decided to go out, but this was a slap in the face because we literally had three dates canceled over the next year and a half. And we had several social gatherings and one that always fell on the wrong time because of my business work. So finally, I was able to attend one where a few of her friends were present at this gathering as well. Now, this is coming up in the part where I talked about earlier about when a woman's treating you like a second-class citizen and there's other women there, just go hang out. Go hang out with the other women. It's interesting what happens when you're not bothered and then you just go put your time and attention with somebody else. 
One of her friends were high key hitting on me and it was obvious she didn't like that. On top of that, I wasn't paying her any attention whatsoever and talking to her friends. Hey, may the best girl win. If she doesn't see your value, you'll just move on and keep looking until you find somebody who does see your value. She eventually caught me alone making my own plate and would ask me awkwardly why I had been ignoring her instead of answering her question. And I answered with, Aw, you want some attention too? And asked her to come here and give a bear hug and kiss her forehead and said, does little sis want some attention too? How sweet. <laughs> she began to blush and said, oh, I'm your sister now and said, that's not a title I want. And I followed with, well, what title do you want then? Whoever's asking the questions is the person that's in charge of the conversation. You should always remember that in every social interaction, every job interview, every negotiation, anytime you're trying to influence somebody. If you're asking the questions, you're running the conversation. Just keep that in mind. She bypassed the question and then asked, when can we hang out? And this time I responded to her with saying, we can hang out at my place and order some food. When are you free? She didn't like the idea of coming to my place saying, I don't go to guys' houses on first dates. Now keep in mind, this is a girl who is canceled three times on him. One of them 10 minutes before he was supposed to pick her up. So somebody like that at this point in the timeline, it's like, no, you're not meeting her out. You're not picking her up. You're... You're not going out on dates. The only distance that you're going to be willing to travel is the distance that it takes to go from your front door or your, wherever you are in your house to your front door to let her in. So he responded jokingly saying, well, you've canceled on me numerous times in the past, so you have to earn me taking you out to dinner. That's a great response. But... She responded negatively to the wording earn, stating, I don't have to earn anybody's time. And I smoothly responded with, well, I'm not just anybody. So if you decided you want to enter the race, <laughs> hinting that there's a competition, let me know when you change your mind, you got my number. So instead of her being sweet and being flexible and going along with what he wanted in a playful way, he's like, hey, you got my number. In other words, guys that didn't know any better would have agreed and changed the plans. But this is a woman who's jerked him around and disrespected him multiple times. And if he's got plenty of options, which obviously he does at this point, then he's not interested in meeting her out or spending money on her. She can come over and make him dinner and make it up for the fact, because he's got the attitude, hey, you can make it up to me for the fact that you've canceled several times. And I'll still give you a shot as long as you're nice to me. Later during the gathering, one of her friends came over who showed interest in me earlier and came and sat in my lap during the bonfire, letting everyone know how handsome she thought I was, and we exchanged numbers on the spot. The man is an equal opportunity seducer. Because he's got one girl he's liked for years, and she's jerked him around, and quite frankly, he's got history with her, and the history is pretty negative. So... We, as 3% men, we like women who are nice to us and who are flexible and who are givers and who are excited to spend time with us. And this girl had a crummy attitude. And so you got another cute girl he has no history with who sits in his lap and is letting every other girl at the party know how handsome she thinks he is. This is the right way to handle things. If somebody treats you properly, they get the greatest gift you can give them, which is the gift of your time. And if not, they get the gift of missing you. And when they cop an attitude and don't want to do what you want to do, then you politely say, no, thank you. The same night on my way home, the girl who claimed she didn't have to earn my time texted me asking for my address and asked me what I wanted to eat. Notice how flexible she became. I had similar stories I wrote about in 3% Man. It's amazing having other women who want you, how it causes other women who have a bad attitude to all of a sudden mysteriously have an attitude adjustment. The same night on my way home, I, well, okay, so 
She says, so not only did she come over, but she brought takeout dinner as well. Remember, this is a girl that's blowing them off three times. And when she brought up getting together, she still didn't have the right attitude. He pushed her away, and another cute girl sat in his lap. So what is she seeing? She's like, if I don't snap this guy up, one of these other girls is going to. It's obvious. It was happening in front of her. When she came over, it's like all the sexual tension that was built up over the years was released in one night. Hang out, have fun, hook up. Teespring.com, the Coach Corey Wayne store. I think Teespring is now Spring, just Spring.com. For whatever reason, they changed their name. But you can get to it the same place. She came in the door and laid the food down, and then I motioned for her to come to me, very masculine, nicely done, and grabbed her by the waist and pulled her in close and asked her, what was the title you wanted since you don't want to be little sister? And immediately you could see the shock in her face followed by the biggest smile. And we began going to Pound Town where the sprinklers went off several times that evening. So she came like a waterfall, huh? You got that chocha. To no surprise, after only two times of coming over and one date, she's already asking for a relationship trying to lock me down. But you didn't ask for a relationship. You just hung out and had fun and hooked up. Hmm. Interesting. And it's exactly the opposite of what Hollywood and TV shows us to be doing. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? She told me she liked me for the longest time, but I was so hell-bent on one chick... She gave up the interest. The old me would have agreed, but the new me declined because I want to experience more women before I decide to be monogamous. Ooh, I bet that made her even more frisky because now she's got to try even harder to get you. Even though she gave up the box, you're like, "Uh -uh uh-uh-uh, gonna take my time. Thank you so much, Coach. Never in a million years would I have said some of these daring things that most would consider disrespectful. Well, it's just masculinity. It's misogynist. That's what being a man's about. Men are naughty. We're sexual beings. We all got here through sex. So don't be embarrassed or ashamed of your desire. Be proud of it. And don't apologize for it ever. So I set up a date on the spot or remained calm after a girl's shit test and I didn't panic. Your book tells us things are 10 times easier when a woman's interest is high and that is evident in these stories. I hope you I hope to send you, send you more success stories in the future. Well, great job, dude. Thanks for sharing that detail because it's cool to see the progression, how the evening winds and turns and then you got a woman coming back into your life who had jerked you around a bunch and you were calm in how you reacted to it. You weren't in a rush. You were like, oh, my God, now I finally got my chance to get in your pants. You were like, eh, I'm not too sure about you yet. Eh, I think you should come over to my house. I'm not coming over to your house. It's kind of like just like right out of the James Bond movies when the women say, I'm not having sex with you tonight, James. There's no way I'm sleeping with you. And he just goes, and he smirks, and he smiles because he knows how it's going to end. He knows it's going to end and hang out, have fun, hook up. The magic formula. So if you'd like to get my help personally with a challenge, whether it's in your personal life or your professional life, go to understandingrelationships.com, click the products tab at the top of your screen on any page, and book a coaching session with yours truly. Until next time, I will talk to you soon. 